What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we have a little bit more of a casual video. I'll be taking you guys through a tour of my personal office space as a sportswear designer. Over the last four, five years, I've optimized my working space to be more efficient in my process, to be more creative, to be more collaborative. So obviously this is not the perfect space by any means, but consider this the tour of a sportswear designer's office. I'll take you guys through little tips and tricks that I incorporate in the space to be more efficient. And if you guys think that there's anything that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll look into inquiring about that or actually acquiring that piece. So without further ado, we'll take you guys right into the video. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. So starting off with the office space, we have one of the most important sections of the office, which is my personal sample rack. As a design company, the translation between a digital asset and a physical product is key. So having quick access to the samples that we've created for our own brands, our customer brands, and being able to see that in person and to review them against the digital tech packs is essential. So that's why I have this right next to my desk and just having that quick access to it is essential and it really does help speed up the workflow. It puts a physical representation of the products that we're designing on a day-to-day -day basis. It keeps us motivated and it allows us to use any of these samples, whether they are our own or they're fit locks that we're using to reference for different designs, different products or physical kind of details, whether it's the hemline, the prints, the stitching methods. It's just good to have a physical product access at all times. At the same time, towards the back, I have some of our most commonly used fabric swatches and being able to reference those at any time is essential because anyone who's worked with fabrics will know just because you have the composition of a fabric doesn't necessarily no mean that you know how it feels, how it stretches, what is the tactile resistance, what is the, what's the actual aesthetic of that fabric. So having a quick library of the most commonly used fabrics uh, these swatch hangers is essential and we're obviously building that over over time. This is pretty small uh, in terms of what we have in total, but this is kind of like the stuff that we use most commonly or stuff that we're currently uh, in the middle of using. So that is essential fabric swatches. I cannot recommend this rolling hanger enough. It's something that has been a lifesaver whether we want to collaborate, move the hanger into the boardroom or into the designer space. Having a hanger on wheels is key. Next up, we have the main piece of the office, which is this granite table. It's eight feet wide, and there's a reason for why I wanted such a large table in my office. Number one is it creates a beautiful aesthetic. It's the centerpiece. Uh, it's super, super minimalistic in the sense that it's just a standard stone slab on uh, powder-coated steel legs. But at the same time, it's so wide and open that if I want to be measuring anything out, I can clear out half the desk. I can use this side to measure using my tailor tape, which has inches on one side and centimeters on the other side. Anyone who's worked in the fashion space knows that this is essential. We're always working with fits and measurements, being able to recall those at any time and to be able to actually physically manifest the scale. So for example, if I say on this pair of leggings that I'm trying to design, I would love to have a heat transfer print that's 60 inches wide down the leg, being able to instantly call that out and to reference that on a physical sample using tailor tape is essential. So I can't recommend it enough. And again, having a big open desk is just a way to kind of clear your mind and to kind of be focused. When you have such a cramped space, it's very tough to get your thoughts in order. I find that the more space I have, the more I can organize myself and at the same time, the tighter I can keep it. I'm super OCD about keeping a clean space and it's just one way for me to get into the mood of designing to get creative. So that is something that I'm definitely very, very adamant about. When it comes to the technology side of my workflow, 
Obviously it differs from person to person, but my main setup is a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, it is a 2018 model, it has a, it's a fully spec model. Obviously fashion has become a lot more reliant on technology. Long, or, long gone are the days of just sketching with pen and paper. Obviously that's a big part of it as well, being able to sketch and to convey ideas. But we are a very digital society, whether that's creating content, whether that's 3D manifesting the designs that we make. Being able to have equipment that is able to handle the needs of my workflow is essential. So I have a 2018 fully spec MacBook, um, 32 gigs of RAM, a Vega card, one terabyte of storage because obviously I'm storing a lot of client files. So being able to have that with me on the go is essential. And using a MacBook versus a iMac is extremely beneficial to my personal workflow just because I want to have that flexibility of being able to take my work with me on the road so that's always a plus. And if I need more screen real estate, I have a 27 inch 4K LG monitor that has a USB pass through so I can charge and connect my visuals all in one go using one cable, which is, which is essential. It's extremely clear and what I love about this specific monitor is it's quite color accurate. So anyone who's worked with fashion knows that having color accuracy when it comes to your designs is essential. We use Pantone for most of our color callouts. So being able to ensure that what I'm seeing on my iPad screen or my phone screen is what I'm going to be seeing on my monitor that I'm working on almost 24 seven is going to be key. So what I look for in a great monitor for a fashion design workflow is extreme color accuracy. 4K is always helpful, especially when you're working with vector graphic and other bitmap images that you're going to be using on the items. Because if you have a low res screen, what you're gonna have to do a lot of the times is to zoom in excessively and you end up losing that resolution and it's just not the most optimal way. Obviously everything fits within a budget but I definitely recommend investing into a 4K screen. Um, that's the minimum with a great sRGB or an Adobe RGB color accuracy. Next, when it comes to my kind of tactile workflow, I have a gaming mouse on one hand. The reason I use a gaming mouse specifically for my workflow is just because it's extremely accurate so it has a high level of precision i believe this is something like 8500 dpi it's some insane amount of dpi very very accurate i can increase and decrease the sensitivity of the mouse according to how i need different softwares whether i'm using clo 3d which is the 3d modeling software or keyshot which is what we use to render out the garments having the ability to adjust the sensitivity is essential i preach this setup so much where you essentially have a keyboard in the middle you have your trackpad. This is a magic trackpad uh, in a space gray to match my MacBook with a mouse on one hand is specifically for, let's just say workflow navigation. So I use the trackpad on one hand to switch between desktops on the MacBook. I can actually set up different desktops with different types of programs, whether it's Clo, Keyshot, Trello, which is what we use to project manage. And on the other hand, for the more precise motions, I use the actual mouse and then the keyboard in the middle and I'm able to transition my screens between my MacBook screen which I actually keep open at all times and my actual screen which is the LG 4K screen that I'm talking about. Next, if I want something a bit more tactile, I have my iPad Pro. So this is a 11 inch iPad Pro, Apple Pencil and it comes with uh, this keyboard which I don't really use because a lot of my on the go computing I use on my MacBook, but it is handy to have it, it protects it. And at the same time, the Apple Pencil allows me to take notes on the go, whether I'm reviewing a design with a client or I'm reviewing a design with a design team. We use Procreate to sketch a lot of the products that we do. So that's not something I personally do, but if I were to sketch, and our team do sketch a lot of amazing sketches actually, we would use, I would use Procreate. So um, I'm not much of a sketcher myself, but it is something if I want to get an idea out there for a garment, it would be Procreate for sure. Next, we have this. So this is not necessarily for a sportswear designer, but the modern designer is a creative with a lot of thoughts and ideas in their heads and want to get it out to the world. We have a podcast that we put out weekly called the Fit Design Podcast. We put out mini Fit Bites, which are basically summaries of the content that we put out on this channel highly recommend you check it out, but this is a Blue Yeti Blackout mic. I'm in the process of getting a boom 
stand for it, to be able to be more flexible and to kind of elevate it. Uh, one thing I notice is during our videos, the audio isn't 100% because we're using the shotgun mic on the camera, but I would love to upgrade that and to be able to incorporate a boom stand to this so that it's not only the podcasts that are getting super crispy quality. I also want to call this bad boy out. This is a, this is probably the most important thing. <laughs> if I was to keep one thing in my office, it would be the Herman Miller Aeron chair. So this is a, anyone who knows about chairs knows the Herman Miller Aeron chair. It's a design that hasn't changed in the last 30 years. It's a great quality chair, a timeless piece, and a piece that I can't recommend enough, especially for creatives. Why is that? Well, we spend so much time in front of the computer screen and we neglect our bodies. We don't take care of ourselves in the way that we need to take care of ourselves. We don't fix our posture. We don't stretch when we need to stretch. And over time, when you're young, this is something that you can easily get around. But as you grow older, your body will pay for it. So for me, I definitely wanna make sure that where I'm sitting is just as comfortable as possible. I can maintain my posture, I can adjust the chair. And you don't need a super expensive chair to, to do that. Obviously that comes with just minding the way that you're sitting and taking occasional breaks to stretch um, and just maintain your posture overall. But if you have a little bit of uh, funds to invest into a great seating solution, I can't recommend the Herman Miller Aeron chair enough. I've had this specific piece for four years and um, it's practically brand new. With chairs, it's something that I would recommend investing some money in because they do take a lot of wear and tear. So a great quality chair is gonna last the ages and it's not something you're gonna need to replace that often. Pay once and keep it for a lifetime. So that's what I say. This has a great amount of lumbar adjustability. You can adjust the hands. Um, you can adjust pretty much everything. It glides super smoothly, especially on these floors, having a chair that has great quality legs, it's not gonna scuff up the floor, is essential. This table has one big drawer in the middle, and then it has three small drawers for smaller things, like whether they're hang tag samples, packaging samples, any other types of small trims that I may have, I will always carry through. This, a bit old school, but it's a integrated phone system, kind of like Cisco, and the reason that I particularly value this, obviously it's not plugged in now for an aesthetic reason, but uh, the, the reason I value this kind of stuff is communication. When you're working and there's so much going on at the same time, being able to eliminate the friction from your life is key. Even if you, you pay a little bit more upfront, but you're eliminating that friction and you're getting more work done, invest into your workflow. I'm a key proponent of investing into your workflow. Starting the business, the goal was always to reinvest into the business, better equipment, better workflow, better environment, and that was the mentality. That still is the mentality to this day, as opposed to trying to uh, buy things that you don't necessarily need and take money out of that business. That's a bit of a personal tip, but delay that gratification, invest into what you love, and if you love it, you actually get a lot of joy from investing into the things that make your business better. So that's kind of my take. Also, decide we have some books from our suppliers for different fabrics and just having access to a wide range of fabrics is always key this is a 2021 fabric booklet so all the new fabrics so we can stay up to date is always essential the key component of every great garment is its fabric composition make sure that you are working with the right people to give you the right fabrics because you know this feeling you could put on a great t-shirt that's well designed, but if the fabric feels horrible, you're not gonna wanna wear that t-shirt. So sportswear designers, we have access to all these great fabrics, functional fabrics, brush fabrics, fabrics that really can elevate your design to the next level and can give you the information that you need or the edge that you need to create amazing quality designs. And I can't recommend it enough. Moving forward, we have, over here this is kind of like a personal shelf and uh, I really enjoy this a lot. I think the reason I want to call attention to this specific space is it's important to know in your personal space uh, to have kind of like a connection, a physical connection to your space, to have a personal being to it. At the end of the day, you can design the best office and it can be the most efficient. You can have all of these different setups, but if it doesn't feel like somewhere you want to be, if it doesn't feel like something that you're building up over time, a piece of you, it's not worth spending the amount of time that you're undoubtedly going to spend. I love coming into my office every single day to create, 
to engage with my team, um, just to be passionate about, to be in the moment with what I do. So this is uh, a very nice way to kind of collect gifts that, you know, friends, family, um, suppliers, all of these people, like they, they send and it basically becomes a living, breathing wall. Uh, over here we have some wines. Um, here we have a bit more of like physical items, uh, a ball that we've designed, um, some other artifacts. Over here, these are camera equipment and it's a big part of our identity. Anyone who's watched our channel knows that we have an amazingly creative team that helps us make amazing content on a day-to-day -day basis. So being able to have the equipment necessary to make great quality videos and share that workflow is essential. Like one thing that us as creatives have that maybe the generation before us didn't have is the ability to share our passion, to share our knowledge and to collaborate on that. And that's amazing. That's something I want to take full advantage of and hopefully you guys are enjoying that process along with us. So that's a, again, it's a steel shelf with some wood shelving with, they have a vinyl on them. The reason we picked this vinyl is just to match the aesthetic of the room. Personally, I might've gone for something that's either full black or was a bit lighter in color. I think the clashing between the grayish floors and the shelving is not the best, but it is what it is. And maybe in the future we'll change that. Moving on, the last kind of main piece here is this open glass wall. Again, one of the main items for me as a sportswear designer was having an open space that just felt like a space I wanted to be in. Nothing dark, nothing secluded. To have that ability to engage with my team is also essential. And these two large chairs are just when we have people over. It's a nice place to sit down, to take in a moment, um, whether it's checking one of the books, which I'll take you guys into. These are uh, some of the resources that we use in the office. But this is sort of like the more seating space that's at the front of the office. And I enjoy it. It looks pretty as well, so that's always a positive. Next, the last pieces here we have on this little table stand. These guys are super useful. Obviously, when you're sketching, when it comes to sportswear, clothes in action, so important. Being able to represent your clothing and your designs in a way that people can see how these items are meant to be used is so key. I'm gonna be referencing this brand a lot and it's called Fashionary and they put out great resources for fashion designers. Not necessarily for sportswear designers, they're more focused on mass fashion, but as you know, sportswear is fashion, and uh, we should be proud that it is a fashion space that's growing extremely quickly, and it's really, you know, it's something that's become a household item in most people's lives and most people's kind of vocabularies of what fashion is. This is a great pose reference. Um, it has a variety of different pose illustration types. Uh, on a standard mannequin that you can trace over and you can kind of basically cut out the work of having to figure out anatomy because anatomy design and being able to draw characters is another workflow completely and we leave that to the great illustrators out there but for us we just focus on very convincing designs that we can showcase in a beautiful way and one that shows their functionality whether it's a dynamic pose but all about this set is it has pretty much everything you need basic casual freedom um, just a bunch of different types of poses. You, there are these athletic poses that we really like that we use all the time. And it's right here. You can sort of see the poses that are, we're able to use and we're able to see and these are a bit more athletic. So depending on what type of poses you're going for, this is a great resource that you can have. The uh, Website will be linked in the in the bio. Obviously, this is not a sponsored post specifically. It's just something that I personally use. Uh, if you want to sponsor us, feel free to sponsor us. But uh, these are just stuff that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Poses for fashion illustration. I love this. I actually have two of these. One for me, one for the team. And this is just a book with everything in it. Same company. I won't open it up because I don't want to put their business out there specifically. Like, obviously, if you like the book and you should like the book, buy it, I cannot recommend it enough, but it has pretty much everything you need. It runs you through uh, visual styles, materials, different weaves, different knits. We get a lot of information, inspiration for our videos from this book, I can't recommend it enough. Fashionpedia, ready to go anytime you need. Uh, I love their model, which is you don't need to remember everything, you just need to know where to find them. So this is a great 
kind of tool, uh, one that you can call up anytime during des your designs, whether you want to select a specific type of collar or a specific type of hemline, everything is there, can't recommend it enough. And then they have their more focused books. This one is pretty much Fashionpedia, but even more in depth for bag design. Takes you through the construction techniques, it takes you through the types of bags, the anatomy, everything that you need to know is about bike design can be found in this book. Cannot recommend it enough. Beautiful, it's so well illustrated as well, so aesthetic. I just love having it around even if I don't read it, just for the look of it, really. And then lastly, we have shoe design, which is an area that I'm really interested about getting more and more into. We've had some shoe design clients in the past and obviously with sportswear, shoe design is key. So this is also the third representation of that, but that's pretty much it from a office tour standpoint. We've done a larger office tour around two years ago. If you want us to do an updated office tour, let us know in the comments below, maybe a bit more in depth, maybe engage with some of the team, um, just so you guys can see what an actual fashion design agency or sports or design agency is like on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe we do something a bit more informal like a vlog. Let us know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash a thumbs up. If you stuck around this long and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe already. We put out great content on a week to week basis, sometimes two a week. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.